Well, good morning. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, Shane. This morning. is uh, the morning. first episode ever of The Morning Man. And let me be the first to say this to you guys. Good morning, man. <laughs> good morning. Hey, how are you guys doing today? Great. Doing really good. I mean, you guys pretty excited about this? Pretty pretty stoked. It's It's been a long time coming. Shane, you came to me about a year and a half ago, uh, about the same time I met Mike. Uh, and you said, man, we got to do these podcasts. I think I was just just starting out in the Facebook world. I had figured out how to create a was it a YouTube channel? I didn't yep. know what I was doing. Uh, but Shane was like, "Man, let me let me let me show you how to do this." And uh, man, COVID hit, and, things, and and we started some stuff there at the house. Yep. Uh, but you gave you gave me the name of the Zabel Zone. The Zabel Zone. And it has stuck. And I, I don't like want to be prideful and say it's the Zabel Zone, but man, it's kind of catchy. The Zabel Zone. Got that it good is. alliteration. That's where everybody <laughs> wants to be. <laughs> And then Mike, I, like I said, I met you at about the exact same time. We met through a, a local networking group here in the in our home city, Moore, Oklahoma. Yeah. Uh, you're with Neptune Innovations. That's right, dude. You're super talented. Well, you know, I don't know about all that, but uh, we're 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 excited to be a part of this and uh, ho- hosting here at, at World Headquarters for the Morning Man. So. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. you know, it's just a startup, man. There's there's so much more to come from this. That's right. Um, so what what do you do here, at Neptune Innovations? Let's go ahead and give you a little bit of a plug. You are our big sponsor for this show. If it wasn't for you and all this technology behind the scenes, we wouldn't be here. So, man, tell tell everybody, give them, tell them what you do here at Neptune Innovations. What would you say it is you do? So, Neptune Innovations is uh, we provide business technology services and solutions, and there's a lot of things that fall into uh, the gauntlet of what that maybe means. Uh, websites, network administration, uh, uh, services along the lines of like a managed service provider, um, graphic design, audio, video recording here in the studio. Uh, um, we have a couple different types of capabilities to accommodate that. Uh, we have drones. I think we can say we have a fleet of drones now. Uh, so we've got 360-degree cameras, a couple different uh, types of those. And uh, that's becoming... That's becoming a thing that we're really wanting to push out. Uh, so if there if there's a plug for anything, Neptune 360 is uh, you know a service that we'd like to really uh, be providing more yeah. uh, with uh, augmented reality and virtual reality becoming more and more of a thing. So um, so if it's if it's got a button, hardware and software, uh, and it's causing you a challenge, we we like walking through those challenges with you. So and that is why I'm. So glad that you're my friend. I don't. <laughs> the, the you te- say that today, <laughs> man. The technology thing went bye bye back somewhere around Super Nintendo. <laughs> I'm old enough to say that, man. I still remember when things were not even 2D. They were just colorful little graphics, and that fireball was just a thing that spit across the screen. And you used to jump. Y'all remember jumping over the yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so on your technology side of things. I'm going to give you a little bit of a plug just because right here in, uh, or not right here, but in my hometown, Norman, which is just a few miles south of here, we got pummeled by a nasty hailstorm. People all over the state, really. This yeah, this weather truly. year, between the ice, between the hell, between, uh, and I know the tornadoes are coming. It is Oklahoma. It's going yeah. to happen. Um, your drone work, it, roofers. Big hey, time. What a liability. If you own a roofing company... Like just to just to relieve that liability exposure right. and have a professional come out and take a look at the roof. Do you and you do that type of work? You've worked with some roofers in the past. So we have uh, we have we have uh, we have a uh, a drone that it's the uh, unique typhoon and uh, the the you know just like you said one of the, one of the main motivations of us wanting to uh, get an asset like that was the liability that roofers have when they have to get up on on a roof that has a steep pitch or, or, you know, really way up there. Uh, you know, a lot of times they have to call in a, a certified climber and, uh, you know, those guys really know what they're doing, but they're literally called in as specialists because they're risking their lives right. to, you know, protect that, that, that roofer. But there's still, you know, a, a huge amount of liability if someone, you know, you know, God forbid slips and falls. Uh, so, you know, with the drone, you know, worst thing that you uh, I'm gonna knock on wood on that, you know. Uh, but, but no one's gonna die. Right. Uh, you know, we crash a drone. Uh, everyone's going home and sleeping, you know, peacefully at night. So, 
uh, yeah, you know, protect your guys uh, and uh, and fly a drone. <laughs> How about that? Protect your guys, fly a drone. <laughs> hey, man. Or, did... or better yet, let us fly the drone for you and protect them even more. So, <laughs> You know, we got to come up with a catchy jingle for that. None of it rhymed, but I'm going to remember that. You know, don't harm your guys. Get a drone. <laughs> Stay home, fly a drone. Yeah, and then and then we're we're on to you, Shane. I gave a brief introduction to you, man. You are author of two incredible books, Disturbed, and I'm gonna let it, let you talk about the other book. I know they're both available on Amazon. I got a little bit lucky because you brought them both to me to my office. Yep, and I thank you so much. Uh, so so Shane, wh- how did you get to this point, man? Where failure, lots and lots of failure, and doing things wrong, and that's the other book was the power of doing it wrong. Mm-hmm. And I realized if you look at anybody that's successful at any level in life, what you find is a whole mess of failures. There's very few people that have made it to the top that haven't failed along the way. And um, yeah, that's that's what that book's all about is is learning from the things we do wrong. Because in that book, there's so many stories about things that people did in error that actually ended up being a solution to a problem. There was a guy that was working on uh, a heart... uh, reader and what ended up happening is in the middle of the night he's working on it I can imagine and grabs the wrong part and slaps it in we end up having the cardiogram that that, that everybody uses uh, now for heart mm-hmm. it's like a major medical advancement that came out of an error that accident. came out of an accident something that was done wrong and, and that's life like how many times have we done something wrong it's like going the wrong direction to figure out that the right direction is the other way a lot of times we're headed east looking for a sunset. It doesn't rise in the east. It rises the other way. So you learn from failure. And that's what that book was about. And my, you know, through my, my journey in life, I've done many things and I still do many things. I mean, a lot of people are shocked to find out I started as an electrician. And I still Spark. am an electrician. I still. <laughs> it sparks joy. Yeah. I forget that you're an electrician. I've known you a year and a half now. <laughs> yeah. And I do that because I love I love the problem solving aspect of it. And a shift that happened to me was I was like, well, I love problem solving. I love helping people rewire their homes and their machines. But I thought, what if I could also help them rewire their minds? Help yeah. them have that shift where they they cannot just be stuck because I spent a lot of time in my life stuck. I went to different areas and I get stuck. And even now there's times when I get stuck. But the difference is when you get stuck, like you're gonna get stuck in life, but you don't have to stay stuck. Yeah, and it's learning true. those tools and those principles and the skill set to get yourself out and get moving again. And that's why I love doing like my micro messages that are that are available online. And they're short. They're to the point. I usually throw movie clips in there and make them humorous because I want people to have just a little tool, a little nugget they could take and apply to their life. Yeah. And they can find that at hashtag micro message. Ha- hashtag micro message. And you can find those on Facebook, on Instagram, I've got them all over YouTube, and it's just for people that really, really, even teenagers, like younger people, I created them for fun, for entertainment, for enjoyment, but with a purpose and a message to change yeah. something. That's incredible. So, I mean, you you guys are both gifted from the man upstairs. You know, he has clearly identified your talents, and that's exactly what you both are. Uh, but to, to digress and get into what this show is all about... Uh, let's just introduce it. Let's let everybody know that's going to be watching this show that it is not what we are, and that's not what we're here for. And I think that uh, 2021, this is probably going to be one of the most controversial podcast series on the internet because we are talking about men. We are going to talk about the warriors that are within us and who we were meant to be, not what we were meant to be. What we were meant to be is, is an electrician, a life coach a tech specialist, a father, a steward of God, but it's who we are on the inside that we are made of, not made from, but made of. You know, we were made of God. We're made in God's image. And it goes back, you don't even have to read very far into the Bible to see that man, mankind was made in the image of God. So let's, let's, let's go back and, and look at what the image of God is. Okay, the image of my life, is what I see, how I live. Everything is my image, what I see. So if I'm going to make something in my image, it's going to be off of the perception of what I see today. And so God did that. But if all the text, all the ancient text that, that leads up into the Bible or throughout the Bible tell stories of God being a warrior. 
He was looking to conquer evil. He had an adventurous heart. I mean, just with the, the very breath uh, that he spoke, he spoke the existence into the universe. Right. What an adventure that was. Now, granted, it was a seven-day adventure. Most of my seven-day adventures are more like driving across country, <laughs> you know, or, or trying to make sure my kids are on time to school and, you know, every single day. That's my adventure. But God's adventure was so much bigger than that. So that's who we're made from, is, is somebody with that type of life, that type of image. And that's who we are as a man. But the cool thing about being a man is, is society, or the opposite of what society has told us that we are. And, and, and I'm not shaming any woman for this, but common society, women have been telling men who they are. For, you are so kind. You are so sweet. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. But I'm a lot more than that. Right. Boom. Oh, put me on the battlefield. Let's go. You mess with my family. I am not sweet. I am anything but. I will rise up to the occasion and I will defeat whatever is is harm's way in front of my family. Yeah. Right. And I think most men feel that same way. You guys, you guys certainly feel that. There's nobody in your life that could ever offend or hurt your family, right? Right. I mean, we're just we're gonna we're gonna move through this. So we are called to be what God has called us to be. So we are what we are. Now, I am a finance coach. I like to call myself a, a life coach. I, I don't really know that that's a, a title that's ever been given to me, but if you speak it into existence, I believe that it'll happen. Uh, there's many other things. I am very strong, or before my back was there. <laughs> I can still move a refrigerator with the best of them, so that's the man <laughs> in me. Uh, I, I'm, I'm at least keeping that, that piece of sanity and run with my kids. Uh, I am called to be a husband. I am called to minister. I'm called to, to this show. But who I am. So let's uh, let's take a minute and, and introduce our stories to the people. Because I think part of being a man that, that we overlook, society overlooks, is vulnerability. Um, you know, Jesus would go to the garden and turn to his father. Uh, but, but later on in the Bible, we must confess our sins to man and we must be in community. So... Uh, let's be vulnerable for the listeners. Let's tell everybody who we are. Mike, who, uh, tell us your story, man. What, what brought you to Christ? Who were you before Christ? And, 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 and what's compelled you to be, the, be here right now? Wow. Uh, those are big questions. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, you know, I, I would say the concise version of all of that is, uh, you know, as I, I grew up in a Christian home. Uh, a pretty, a pretty, what I think was a, a very sheltered Christian home, and uh, there were a lot of good things about that. That at the time I did not <laughs> think were good things. Um, I, uh, I, we, we, we live. I grew up in Southern Michigan for one, uh, home of uh, Doctor Kevorkian and Kid Rock. <laughs> oh, uh, there's probably some more, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, positive maybe uh, folks. You know, I, I do like Kid Rock though. Uh, <laughs> No, I, I won't lie. Um, grew up in Christian home. Uh, watched my brother get discipled through high school and uh, chased after a lot of what I watched my older brother do. And, uh, you know, ended up having a real close relationship with, with the man that did that. Uh, his name was Vinnie Tumia. And uh, ended up uh, going to Bible school uh, for a couple of years with an organization called New Tribes Bible Institute. Um, my brother did the same thing. Uh, I, uh, I did a lot of those things though, because I was chasing after what someone, what I was watching someone else doing. I was modeling after my older brother. Mm -hmm. Uh, and my heart really wasn't in those things. And very quickly, uh, I would say there, there was uh, degradation on the quality of the things that I was doing. Um, that led to me joining the Navy uh, and spent six years in the Navy and uh, got married. Uh, been married for 13, 14 years now, uh, depending on uh, which date you go by. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, and that journey has been uh, fraught with a lot of challenges, uh, some that we've encountered together and some that I brought, you know, brought into the relationship. And, uh, uh, you know, we have, uh, a, a, a couple of, you know, a couple of challenges running around the house, uh, that we call them kids. 
and uh, you know, love, 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 love our kids, love, love, you know, love the family that God's given to me. And um, you know, the reality though is that that story is fraught with a lot of brokenness. Um, there was a lot of irresponsibility uh, in my young years that led me to joining the Navy. Uh, I was ridiculously irresponsible with just everything. Uh, uh, I think I was at one point, God, I think I was working. A teenager? Right, I don't know. I, maybe, Shane, maybe Shane's not. shaking his head. Like, I don't yeah, know what no, you guys Shane, are talking Shane about. Good, but, uh, <laughs> no, you know, I, I, uh, I think I was working like four jobs at one point and making decent money, but just, you know, it was, it was evaporating and, uh, uh, the responsibilities that I had, uh, you know, wasn't, wasn't living up to them at all. And, uh, I thought truck driving school or the military would, would be, uh, you know, an easy in. And, uh, and that's what I ended up doing. I, you know, I joined the Navy and, um, and that was good in a lot of ways. There were a lot of terrible things that happened, uh, that I willingly walked into uh, as a sailor. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that led to some uh, challenges later on in my marriage. Um, and, uh, and, you know, uh, there has been, you know, w- one thing I'll say is, you know, in the context of story and who we are called to be uh, as Christ followers, you know, the best stories are redemption. Those are the ones I like. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot because that's what my story is now. <laughs> I think I think probably all of our stories are that way. But uh, yeah, I would say currently my story is, is super centered around redemption, um, and uh, you know God God has really challenged what calling means to me. Uh, you know, as you rattle off the laundry list of you know a warrior and an adventurer and and all these different kind of faces, you know, protector and provider. Um, <clears throat> you know, we wanna we wanna. I think sometimes embrace one of those over the other mm. to the detriment of the others. And yes. it's really this balancing act of, you know, wearing all these uh, different faces, you know, in the, uh, I, I, I participate in a group that uses a curriculum called uh, authentic manhood. And they talk about the faces of men and uh, they have four different faces. And one of the things they emphasize is, is wearing them all. You know, if you, mm-hmm. if you wear just one and you really lean into that to an extreme, you know, all these things fall out of balance. And so, uh, and I can say, I definitely know what it's like to have things fall out of balance uh, with my story, so. Oh, yeah. Man, thanks for sharing. I know it's uh, it's difficult <laughs> to really get into our past because it is broken. And there's a lot of things back there that maybe shame might set in. You know, are, are we shameful in what we do? Or are we kind of boasting in the brokenness that we have? So, Shane, <laughs> let's hear your story. All right. Yeah, I'll give you a little bit. I mean, it's just our past. It's not who we are. It's just where we came from. And, you know, stuff happens to all of us. Same stuff happens to all of us in a roundabout way. And it's really not about the stuff that happens. It's about what we do about the stuff that happens that makes all the difference. So, for me, growing up... Uh, went to church we were sunday night wednesday night if it was open we were there and we shifted as far as church life we shifted churches pretty frequent and and later i mean before i went into junior high that was kind of the last time we were steady in church and you know we just had a falling out uh, my parents weren't afraid to call people out and there were people in the church doing stuff that you weren't supposed to do they'd be ministering to the hookers and uh a different way than what you would think. So they had to call people out, and people don't like it when you call out their leader. So sometimes um, when you do the right thing, other people don't know how to handle it, and that's what happened to my parents, unfortunately. So they took the approach of, well, we don't want any part of it, so they stopped going. So my junior high to high school and the rest of it, no church. It was I just went occasionally with friends to different stuff. Uh, growing up, had a great uh, childhood. Parents had a lake house. I lived at the lake on the weekends. My friends could attest that went. They still have some of their favorite memories. So like if I had to call them, huh. they always will talk about how much fun we had at the lake or at our house doing stuff. We were always outside doing something fun, throwing a football around, backyard football. I mean, good, good life. And um, later on, so... 
my dad is an electrician, and he had trained me to become an electrician from the time I was 14. Keep me out of trouble, went to work. I learned how to work on multi-million dollar machines. At age 14, I'm fixing stuff. Wow. So my background right out the gate is, is problem solving. That's all I know. That's all I knew. I didn't know anything different. So I actually ended up going to electrical trades in while I'm in high school. And in that process, I was able to get my journeyman license before I even had my diploma. So I'm here I am, 17, not even 18 years old. I've got, and I end up being the youngest in the state to get a journeyman electrical license. Congratulations, man. That's, that's a huge, that, congrats, man. That's, yeah. that's big. That's yeah. huge. Sorry, keep going. So, uh, so I did that, and that was cool. Now, for me, I wanted to go play football. I was skilled at football. I was about the same size and frame. I mean, I was 6'3", 175, a good height, good at what I did, played receiver, and, and um, we had a great team, probably a different era, like with what we have now where there's a lot of technology. Um, that probably would have happened. But back then, you didn't go unless you sent all your NCA clearinghouse stuff in. Mine didn't get sent in until the middle of my senior year. <laughs> so, yeah, I got Bethany, Kansas, said, hey, we'll take you. So could have had the Varsity Blues life, I guess, but missed out on that. Not really. I wouldn't change what I have because immediately I go in and I've got, you know, a really good paying job, making really good money. I'm, I end up, so when I do... At 19, um, I built a house, got married, and two years later, have our first kid. I mean, we got a pretty sweet setup, pretty sweet life. Like, we're miles ahead. We're married with a house, and all our other friends are still partying. And actually, our house was the house everybody would come over to, and we'd just hang out and put... I had a <laughs> 10-foot drop-down projector, and we'd play Mario Kart Wii and whatever else games were yeah. out there. So we had, we had the fun Eye. house. Golden Eye was 64. the younger... That was the younger years. Oh, man. We did GoldenEye in the younger years, but this group, college, because we were all just having fun. Yeah, going back to the stuff that you remember growing up. So that was when we, uh, my wife was attending a church, a Baptist church, and we started going there, and we got really involved, super involved. And I kind of was like, you know, I had been to many churches. This was the thing. Back when I went to all the churches, every time we went to a new church, you had to get rebaptized because it wasn't the way they did it. <laughs> man-made ideology. Some call it stupidity. But anyway, once you're saved, once you're baptized, I think that's good enough. But other, you know, people have their own beliefs. So anyway, at that moment, though, I said, you know what? All those times before I was a kid and I didn't actually make the choice to get baptized, I didn't actually make the choice to turn my life over that I recall. It was just like I did it because everyone else did it because the family did it. We did it as a family. Mm -hmm. So 2007... We had left the uh, church ma that she was at mainly because we were young, married, and they didn't have a spot. Like, the only spot they had was was college and career. Well, everyone in there is single, and they're in college. And mm -hmm. we're married, and we're at a different level, and we didn't want to go with the other people that at the time were our age, which was old, 30, heaven forbid. <laughs> so so uh, we went to a new church, and when we went there... Um, that's where I was like, okay, I heard a message and I was like, that's it. I'm giving my life, rededicating and all that stuff, got rebaptized. And that sparked our journey to where we are today. Everything that's happened in my life has led me to the point I'm at today. Challenges have right. come. Um, all the, you know, that 2008 was a great uh, learning curve for us. Yeah. We were so. Uh, honed in on one way of making income as far as our electric company when I was working with my dad that I had just built a brand new house. I think it was like $340,000, something stupid that I didn't need, way huge. The idea was great because I did Ramsey and Ramsey said, pay off all your debt. Well, I did that. We paid off all the debt, but the house. Yeah, so he's like, well, I'll just problem. reinvest it all, get a bigger house. <laughs> and then 2008 hit. But guess what? If you only have one source of income, you are setting yourself up for failure because if that income goes away, you will not have a source of income. Right. And that's Man, what I was You found with. that out the hard way. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. that big, beautiful house, we got to give back, thankfully, not through <laughs> foreclosure, but a short sale, which is just short of foreclosure. It just doesn't. It is a voluntary. Voluntary. Yeah. Voluntary. 
Vol- vol- yeah, I guess I'm going to get a dictionary if we're going to be on this this uh, this morning show hey, voluntarily. I'll, 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 <laughs> Thor said all words are made up. So Auto correct will fix it. Don't worry. All words are made up. Now that's a whole nother message series yeah. going into the dictionary and the new words that are in there today. Um, man, thank you guys. I know it's hard to to be vulnerable, tell people about your story, um, to to introduce myself to the audience. I don't think I've ever shared the whole story. This might just be the first time. Uh, I've told bits and pieces of it, and for many years, it was kind of like a joking matter. Like, I was a little bit proud of of the things that I had done and the women that I had hurt. You know, that that kind of has always stuck with me, and there's always been a little bit of burden of guilt, but like, like both of you guys grew up in church. You know, I would say that we had a pretty happy family. My mom, God bless her heart, she did the best she could with us. I was a little freaking heathen. Me and you get me with any of my friends. I was a good person until I was with them. (laughs) I was a good guy. I just did bad things. And uh, somewhere around junior high, uh, I fell out of the church. I started to see the cliques and, you know, religion just had a whole different meaning. And, you know, my my curiosity brain ran wild with that. You know, why, why are these people judging me when last week we were on a sermon about judging? And, you know, the, the pastor that, that was at that church, you know, we still stay in close contact to this day. None of that was on him. Uh, I thank God for the lessons that he taught us. But it was just the worldly, worldly view of what church was. And I kind of fell right into that deal. But I fell out of it just as fast because the church didn't mean much to me after I saw what it was for, uh, or at least what I was seeing in the community of it. And so, man, I just, I just, I dove in. I dove in head first to what now was was a life full of absolute sin. Uh, Lost my virginity, took the purity ring off, and boom, it was just one right after another. Uh, My first real addiction was women. Uh, I absolutely loved them. I didn't love what they were. It was just a, you know, being honest and real with you guys, it was just on to the next one each and every time. Can the next one be better? Can the next one be better? Ladies, I'm really sorry if I've done anything bad to you. Uh, by salvation, I'm set free. Uh, I would love to take an opportunity right now to apologize for all the women that I've hurt and their families and their children, but uh, it wasn't me. I was I was in a sick place. Um, shortly after I'd found women, I found drugs. Uh, and it did not take me long before I was just completely down and out. My family could see it. I had lost almost all the weight. You know, it started with... Uh, with a white powdery substance, ended up with pills. And I went from leaving the Navy in 2003 to, and that was in October of 2003, to uh, right at Christmas time of that exact same year, I'd lost like 50 pounds. Mm. I was bad. You know, I was, my friends were stealing from my family. And then one day woke up and realized this isn't where I'm supposed to be. I remembered that there were some of the things about the church from the pastor that I'd learned from that. I'm not supposed to be here, but I didn't stop my life of sin, but I did get away from those people. You know, you say it in, in a lot of your series that you are the fifth or you are the average of the five people you hang around with. Right, well, yep. I changed those five people, found another bunch of delinquents <laughs> and uh, I took to alcohol and alcohol stayed in my life probably all the way through uh, my late twenties, early twenties to, to late twenties. And women were always a big part of that. Uh, one that I don't really talk about very much at all, but uh, man, I fell into the adult industry, the adult film industry. Uh, be I was a, a male entertainer, and I traveled the country, and you know, through that, you, you just imagine the gates of sin that just open up. And right. now, I'm not going to get graphic in this because this isn't the place. But uh, I actually don't think there's any place for me to get graphic about that anymore. <laughs> uh, God, take that one out of me. But it wasn't until. I'd say close to my, my late twenties, I met a guy who at the time was making the type of money I wanted to make. He was like my guru moment, man, what do I got to do? He said, well, first of all, I don't think if you're going to be successful, people are going to follow you in that life. You need to go to church. And he took me to, uh, to life church right here. And actually more hadn't even been opened yet. It was still South side. OKC when that campus was busting out of the seams and, it was very weird to see a pastor on TV. Right. Very weird. <laughs> like, um, what year was that? Oh gosh, man! Don't don't get me doing math. Like, this is a talk show, not a math show. I <laughs> uh, see 25, 26 years old. So close to ten years ago. It was a year before more opened. Okay. So 
Yeah, close to 10 years ago. I mean, it wasn't that weird, right? I mean, because I remember being young and, and walking in and, and, and watching mom and dad either watching the Gaither vocal band or the 700 Club yeah. <laughs> on Dude, TV. Gaither, but man. walking into the church and watching TV, that yeah. was, I was like, oh, was this is... A little bit of well, it, it was very weird. But I, it, the reason why it was so weird to me and mm-hmm. I didn't really feel it is because I grew up in a very traditional church where... Oh, yeah. Pastor was having donuts and coffee with you at the beginning, and yeah, yeah. as he's praying the dismissal, he's sneaking to everybody. Close your eyes so I can sneak to the back, you know. <laughs> yeah. And you didn't leave without a, a pastor a hug. No, a it was a hug. Yeah. And I can still remember Pastor Jones's hug and Beverly. I love you guys. I hope that this finds you because you are you are part of the reason why we're here. But um, mid twenties, mid to late twenties, I, I found the church and rededicated my life. I didn't completely rid it of of all the crap though, you know. I, I held on to a lot of it because I just didn't I didn't know any better, you know. I hadn't fully taken in the whole armor, you know, the, the whole word of God, and it was what three weeks ago, three four weeks ago, I went to a boot camp for men. You guys have what? Uh, yeah, you guys have have experienced this, the John Eldridge series, Wild at Heart. It was an eye opening moment. The amount of forgiveness, the vulnerability I had in front of another man to tell him, like, I need help. And to have a man who is centered in Christ walk me through it, I mean, it was just, it was a revelation in my life. And that's that's where all this came from. My brokenness has led us to this point. The, the things that I've been through, the things that we've been through, there's men out there that are going through some challenges. And that's what this is for, to inspire the men that are that are watching this and that are going to be watching this. Um, we are we are right at the time point. I know we went a little bit over, but I felt like it was good that everybody got to know us and who we are and what we stand for. Yeah. Uh, we've got next Tuesday, 9.30 a.m. Central Time. Tune in. We're going to have a lot more technology for you guys to find this. It's going to be out there uh, just with the hashtag, The Morning Man. Uh, I don't know if we need to add The Morning Man show. You guys out there on TV land can be our... Our gauges on this, if you like it, please drop the comments. You know, the best way to get this message out there is to not just like and share it. Please like and share it, but subscribe to it. Mm-hmm. Help the viewership grow. Help us get a footprint on uh, on the digital yeah. interweb so we can get out. But one last plug, and I want to talk to the women out there. Because women, you are very special. You are very special for who men are supposed to be because God made you from us. And we are separated until marriage. Then we are one flesh. We are not men wholeheartedly until we have a woman that we are attached to. And God has somebody for each and every man. Women, we are going to do everything to let you know that you are the beauty, that we are sent to rescue. We are here for your hearts. We are protectors of your hearts. So we stand for women and what women are supposed to be, not what of the world says that we are supposed to be. We want to thank you guys for joining us today, uh, making this thing happen. We'll see you next Tuesday morning at 930. There you go.